the news you can use. And actually, I'm going to have you put that thing up here in a minute, not right this second. I'm going to talk about uh, okay. a couple of other things here, and then we're going to go to Texas and, and talk about Texas. Um, there was an article that came out last Friday, and it talked about the J Japanese in, in Japan, their real estate market. Now, we've talked before about the Japanese real estate market. In Japan, houses are not considered appreciating assets. They were at one time, but they're not now. And I was, I was looking into that a little bit. Uh, you know, typically in Japan, they don't build houses for a longer period of time. They don't build houses that will last years and years and years because they build them out of kind of subgrade materials and they're designed to essentially fall apart in most cases in 10 to 15 years. And so they don't have the same kind of uh, increasing value like we have here in the United States. Now, that's the majority of the houses. There are a number of houses that are very valuable and they're built well and they last a long time, but they've got a real dichotomous uh, housing market over there. And they have been ahead of us in terms of a housing bubble. So those nicer houses had gone up and up and up and up. And then all of a sudden, and, and this thing started when they had the, the big tsunami here a few years ago, um, they, they had a combination of a, a two for hit. They had a reducing population and they had, uh, you know, people wanting to move primarily from uh, suburb, suburbs to, you know, in the city type thing. And so now what's happened is they have a housing glut uh, as a result of their economy. And they've, they've done some things to mess around with their currency um, over the last, I think it's probably been 20 years. And, and that has come home, that chicken's come home to roost. And so right now what they've got is they've got a glut of houses. Uh, they've already gone through this bubble and now they've got a glut of houses all around the country. And the, in a lot of cases, people have just abandoned houses. And even at $500 a house, believe it or not, they're having a hard time selling these things. Now, it may cost $500 to buy and they may need seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars of work. Um, and the house may be worth forty or fifty when they're done. That's the value of a two thousand square foot suburban house. Uh, but they can't get people to even do that. It is the most bizarre deal. They are they are having problems there. And, um, you know, this is maybe a precursor to what we will see in this country. So, uh, you know, we'll keep our eye on this and we'll use this as guidance to kind of tell you what we think is going to happen uh, here in this country based on what we're seeing overseas. Now, with that said, I want to show you something that I haven't seen in a long time. And we're going to put up today is a Texas foreclosure day. It's the first Tuesday of the month. Uh, and we're going to show you a list that we received. Um, Ashley's going to share her screen, and I can show you some houses that are going for sale. Um, the, the way that uh, Texas and Georgia work is they have a one day a month auction on foreclosures. And so what happens is everything that goes into foreclosure in June, for example, goes to sale today, the 6th of July. And it's a one day a month type thing. It's, a, it's called a rocket docket for that particular reason, because there's not a lot of time. But when you pull these properties, and these are decent looking properties generally, um, you know, they look pretty good. When you, when you click on these things, you'll look at the pictures inside. And you know, Texas is a fairly, you'd think is a fairly hot housing market. I have not seen this happen. I've not seen this level of product come to auction because most people are able to do something. But I think this is the first, uh, or maybe the other shoe uh, is dropping and you're going to see more and more things like this. Interestingly, when you go into one of these and then you pull up the property, the, the starting auction price is about half of what the property is worth in theory. So when that happens, that is a good recipe uh, for the bursting of a housing bubble. I've seen this thing before. We've talked about this kind of ad nauseum over the last year or so, uh, but I'm actually seeing real-time intel where this is happening. Once again, these are generally pretty nice houses. They're not great or beautiful. There's, there's some that are, uh, and they're scattered all over Texas. They're not just in one county and things like that. But uh, when you start looking at these things and you pull these, you click on these deals, you click on the house and you look them up, 
you'll see that, for example, you know, a house that may be worth 240 is the starting bids 120. Now we'll know by tomorrow or probably by the end of this week how this actually goes. So in other words, are people overbidding these houses? If they're all sold at close to market or 90% of market, then we don't have a bubble. If half or more are sold significantly below the value of the house, closer to the ask price than the value, then I think we've pretty well assured ourselves that the bubble has burst. Now, why are we focusing on Texas? Well, it's because they have a rocket docket. Same thing as Georgia. You know, everything once again goes that goes into foreclosure last month goes to sale on the first Tuesday of today of this month. And so you'll tend to see a shift in the market in a place like Texas or Georgia on a foreclosure basis. And this is the canary in the mine shaft uh, analogy. So I will keep uh, keep you guys up to speed. I'll let you know what we see by the end of the week if the data is back by that point in time. And we'll let you know that, uh, you know, how this thing's going. And I can give you a prediction whether we're in an immediate bubble or we're gonna be looking at a bubble next year that's gonna pop, you know, when and where this thing is really coming down the pike. But it's definitely coming, um, at least from an economic standpoint. So there's two sides of this deal, right? There is the side that says uh, people own a house and they can't afford it. And that's all part of this forbearance prevention or forbearance agreement and anti uh, eviction laws that have been put into effect primarily by the federal government, but also by some state governments, especially here in California. And we will see, uh, you know, whether it is purely a seller side issue or if it translates to the broader economy, which is means these properties, there's not enough buyers at the full price to buy these things. So we'll know within probably a few weeks whether this is really a supply side issue. In other words, the economy itself is really tanking or these are just blips and we're not really in a bubble yet. So uh, I can tell you that I have not seen this level of auctions come and I've never seen pricing like this. So generally the stuff that has been selling in the last two or three years at an auction is stuff where people owed about what the house was worth and they couldn't make the payments. And so these lenders took it back and they were trying to sell these things at the full market value, which is what the people owed. Here you've got a situation where people owe half of what the value of the house is and they can't make payments at all. There's no structuring. They've run out of forbearance. There's you know all kinds of different reasons. So uh, this will be uh, definitely a, a teller for what's gonna happen down the road. So I will let you know.